In the heart of a quaint, unnamed town, shrouded in the embrace of ancient oaks, stood the Gallows Art Gallery, a place where the whispers of the past seemed to echo through its hallowed halls. I had just accepted the position of curator, a role I embraced with a blend of pride and excitement. The gallery, with its gothic architecture, and a reputation for housing some of the most intriguing and unsettling pieces of art, had always been a place of fascination for me. As I walked through its corridors on my first day, the paintings seemed to watch me, their eyes following my every step. There was an otherworldly beauty to them, a strange blend of awe and unease that they instilled in me. The gallery staff, a small team of dedicated individuals, shared stories of the gallery's history as we walked. They spoke of its founding, the mysterious benefactors, and the peculiar artists whose works adorned the walls. However, amidst their tales, there lingered an unspoken tension, a secret I was yet to uncover. The town, too, seemed to hold the gallery in a mix of reverence and fear. The local shops and cafes were adorned with artwork inspired by the gallery's collection, yet the townsfolk spoke little of it, their words always measured, their glances quick and guarded. My curiosity peaked as I settled into my new role, eager to unravel the mysteries of the Gallows Art Gallery. Little did I know, the coming full moon would reveal secrets more horrifying than anything I could have imagined. As night fell on my first full moon in the town, the gallery transformed. The moon's silver light seeped through the stained glass windows, casting eerie shadows across the gallery floors. Then, as the clock struck midnight, a chilling phenomenon unfolded. The paintings, those silent sentinels of history, and horror began to scream. The sound was gut-wrenching, a chorus of anguish that filled the night. It emanated from every portrait, every landscape, every abstract form, a symphony of terror that held us in its grip. The staff and I stood frozen, our hearts racing, as we witnessed the walls of the Gallows Art Gallery come to a terrifying light. As the first light of dawn broke, the screams faded, leaving behind a haunting silence and a gallery of secrets waiting to be unraveled. The mystery of the screaming paintings had just begun and I was at the center of it, both terrified and captivated by the unknown forces I was about to confront. The morning after the full moon, the gallery was eerily quiet as if the building itself was holding its breath. The staff, pale and wide-eyed, whispered among themselves, casting nervous glances at the paintings. The event of the previous night hung heavily over us, an unspoken terror that we were all reluctant to address. Yet. There was a burning need for answers that gnawed at my curiosity. Determined to unravel the mystery, I began delving into the gallery's archives. Dusty tomes and ancient documents told tales of the gallery's past, but nothing that could explain the supernatural occurrence. Frustrated, I decided to seek knowledge outside the confines of the gallery. In a quaint corner of the town, I found an old historian, a man whose life had been dedicated to the study of the town's enigmatic past. His home was an eclectic mix of books, artifacts, and parchments, each telling a story of a different era. Hesitantly, I recounted the events of the full moon night to him. The historian listened intently, his eyes narrowing with recognition as I spoke. When I finished, he leaned back in his chair, a grave look on his face. He spoke of a legend, long whispered in hushed tones by the townsfolk. It was said that the souls of the subjects portrayed in the gallery's paintings were trapped within the canvases, cursed to relive their tormented existences. I struggled to believe the tale. It was the stuff of ghost stories and folklore, not the reality I had known. But the historian's words resonated with a chilling truth, especially after what I had witnessed. Returning to the gallery, I shared my findings with the staff. The legend seemed to fit the puzzle, yet it was a piece we all wished was mere fiction. As the next full moon approached, a sense of dread settled over us. We needed more evidence, something tangible to prove or disprove the haunting legend of the Gallows Art Gallery. That's when I decided to set up cameras throughout the gallery. If the paintings were to scream again, I wanted to capture every moment, every detail. Perhaps, in those recordings, lay the answers we desperately sought. The stage was set, and as the night of the next full moon drew near, a silent prayer lingered on my lips, a prayer for understanding for courage, and for the strength to face whatever horrors awaited us in the screaming gallery. The night of the next full moon came with a tension that clung to the air like a thick fog. The gallery, under the watchful eye of the moon, seemed to bristle with an unseen energy. The staff, though apprehensive, stayed to witness what might occur, their curiosity overcoming their fear. As the curator, I felt a responsibility not only to uncover the truth, 
but also to protect them. As midnight approached, we waited in silence, our eyes fixed on the paintings. The cameras, strategically placed, recorded every corner of the gallery. Then, as the clock chimed the arrival of midnight, the screams began anew. It was a sound that could chill the very soul, a cry of despair, an anger that emanated from the ancient canvases. They watched in horror as the paintings transformed before our eyes. The figures would then writhe and twist it, their painted expressions contorting into grotesque masks of agony. The screams were not just sounds but physical manifestations of the torment trapped within the frames. The night passed in a blur of terror and disbelief. When dawn finally broke, we were left exhausted and shaken, the gallery once again silent but forever changed in our eyes. I reviewed the footage with a heavy heart, the evidence undeniable. The paintings were more than mere art. They were prisons for something unexplainable, something profoundly disturbing. The legend the historian had spoken of was real, and we had witnessed its truth. As the days passed, the phenomenon began to occur more frequently. It was no longer bound to the full moon. The screams would start unexpectedly, shattering the gallery's calm at any given moment. The once revered art pieces had become objects of fear, their beauty marred by the horrors they harbored. Visitors to the gallery dwindled, rumors of the haunted paintings spreading like wildfire through the town. The staff, once proud to be part of the gallows art gallery, now worked with a sense of dread, each of us jumping at the slightest creak of the old floorboards. I realized that we were dealing with something beyond our understanding, a curse that was escalating with each passing day. The need for action became urgent, but the path forward was clouded with uncertainty. How does one combat? A curse that is centuries old, a terror that is as much a part of the gallery as the paintings themselves. As the next supermoon approached, a sense of impending doom settled over us. They were about to face the climax of this nightmare, and I feared what horrors it might bring. The gallery, once a place of beauty and history, had become a stage for a terrifying spectacle we were powerless to stop. The night of the supermoon was upon us, and with it, the unknown terrors of the screaming gallery. The night of the supermoon arrived, casting an eerie, luminescent glow over the gallery. The staff and I gathered, a sense of solemnity among us. We had decided to face whatever came together, bound by a shared determination to end the nightmare that had enveloped our lives. As the moon reached its zenith, the gallery seemed to pulse with a malevolent life. The air grew thick, charged with a palpable sense of dread. Then, with a suddenness that took our breath away, the screaming started. It was louder, more agonizing than ever before, echoing through the halls like the cries of tortured souls. But this night was different. The paintings began to change, the figures within them contorting in ways that defied reality. Then, to our utter disbelief, they began to emerge from their frames. Like specters, they stepped into our world, their forms ghastly and distorted, yet terrifyingly real. The gallery descended into chaos. We scattered, seeking refuge from the nightmarish apparitions that pursued us. The figures, bound by some unseen force, wreaked havoc, their screams now mingled with our own. In the midst of this pandemonium, I realized that these entities were bound to the paintings, their existence tied to the cursed canvases. A desperate plan formed in my mind to destroy the paintings and, hopefully, the entities with them. Gathering my courage, I made my way to the storage room, where we kept the inflammable solvents and materials used for restoration. The gallery was a maze of terror, each corridor filled with the screams, and ghastly figures of the paintings come to life. Finally reaching the storage, I grabbed what I needed, and began the harrowing task of dousing the paintings and solvent. Each step was a battle against fear and the surreal entities that sought to stop me. The climax of the night came as I set the first painting ablaze. The flames consumed the canvas, and the figure within let out a final, ear-piercing scream before vanishing. Emboldened, I moved from painting to painting, setting each one on fire. The gallery became a pyre, the flames a beacon of our desperate struggle. The staff, seeing my actions, joined in, helping to destroy the remaining paintings. The entities, their forms flickering, and fading, fought back, but their power waned as the paintings burned. As the last painting turned to ashes, a deafening silence fell over the gallery. The entities were gone, the curse lifted. We stood among the ruins of the gallery, the moon's light filtering through the smoke-filled air. The night of terror had ended, but at a cost we were only beginning to comprehend. The supermoon's light waned, and with it, the nightmare of the gallows art gallery drew to a close. The screaming had ceased but the echoes of that night would haunt us forever. We had faced the unknown, 
and emerged victorious, but the scars of that night would remain, a reminder of the horrors that lurk in the shadows of history and art in the aftermath of the Inferno. The dawn greeted us with a somber light. The once grand gallows art gallery lay in ruins, its walls blackened, and its treasures reduced to cinders. The air was thick with the smell of smoke and the remnants of lost history. We, the survivors of the night, stood amidst the ashes, each lost in our own thoughts of the ordeal we had endured. The town, roused by the sight of the burning gallery, gathered in silent disbelief. Their once proud landmark was now a charred shell, a testament to the unknown terror that had lurked within. The staff and I were questioned by the authorities. Our accounts met with skepticism and disbelief. How could we explain the unexplainable? The truth was too bizarre, too frightening to be comprehended by those who had not witnessed it. In the days that followed, the gallery became the subject of rumors and wild speculation. Some spoke of a curse, others of a mass hallucination. The truth, however, remained known only to those who had lived through it. I spent my days wandering the remnants of the gallery, the memories of that night haunting my every step. The decision to burn the paintings weighed heavily on me. Though it had been necessary, the loss of such historic art was a tragedy. But what choice had we had? The gallery had harbored a darkness that threatened not just us, but potentially the world beyond its walls. The local historian, the man who had first told me of the legend, visited me among the ruins. He spoke of cycles, of history repeating itself, and of the possibility that the curse might not be fully extinguished. His words were a cold comfort, a reminder that some mysteries were better left unsolved. In a final act of closure, I decided to leave the town. The gallery had been my dream, but that dream had turned into a nightmare. The staff, too, dispersed, each seeking to put the distance between themselves and the memories of the gallery. The gallows art gallery was eventually demolished. The land left barren, a hollow scar in the heart of the town. Rumors persisted, stories of strange sightings and eerie sounds where the gallery once stood, but no one dared to investigate. The legend of the screaming paintings became just another ghost story whispered in the dark corners of the town. The final scene of my story takes place years later in a different town in a new art gallery. A set of paintings, eerily reminiscent of those from the Gallows Art Gallery, hangs on the walls. Unbeknownst to the visitors who admire them, a familiar cycle waits to begin anew. The truth of the screaming paintings lives on, a haunting melody that refuses to be silenced. The curse, it seems, was not fully vanquished, merely dormant, waiting for the next unsuspecting curator to unveil its horrors once again. Years passed since the night the Gallows Art Gallery was consumed by fire and with it, the cursed paintings that screamed under the full moon. The town slowly healed, its residents whispering less and less about the bizarre events, allowing them to fade into the realm of urban legends and eerie folklore. I moved to a different city, trying to rebuild my life away from the shadows of the past, yet the memories lingered like ghostly echoes in my mind. The gallery and its horrors became a distant, though ever-present, part of my history. I avoided art exhibitions and galleries, the mere sight of a painting enough to stir the embers of that frightful memory. But fate, it seemed, had a cruel sense of irony. One ordinary afternoon, while strolling through a new city, I found myself drawn to a recently opened art gallery. Something inexplicable compelled me to step inside. The gallery was modern, its walls adorned with a variety of paintings. As I walked through the exhibits, a chilling sense of remembering crept over me. There, in a quiet corner of the gallery, hung a series of paintings that made my heart stop. They were different, yet hauntingly similar to those of the Gallows Art Gallery. The figures in these paintings had the same eerie quality, their eyes seeming to follow me, whispering silent pleas from their canvas prisons. A cold dread settled in my heart. Had the curse truly been broken, or had it merely spread, like a dark contagion, waiting to unleash its terror anew? The gallery owner, noticing my interest, approached and began to speak enthusiastically about the recent acquisition of these magnificent and mysterious pieces. I listened, my mind racing with questions. Where had these paintings come from? Were they connected to the ones that had once screamed under the light of the full moon? Or was this just a coincidence, a trick played by a mind scarred by trauma? The owner mentioned how these paintings were becoming the main attraction, drawing curious visitors, especially on full moon nights. A chill ran down my spine. The cycle was repeating, the curse undying. I left the gallery abruptly, my mind a tumult of fear and urgency. The resolution of my tale is an open one, a whispered warning of a horror 
that refuses to die. The screaming paintings of the Gallows Art Gallery were gone, but their legacy lived on, a lurking threat hidden in plain sight. I often wonder about those new paintings, about the gallery, that now houses them. Are they silent on full moon nights, or do they echo the screams of their predecessors? The answer is a secret I dare not uncover, for some horrors are best left undisturbed, their stories unfinished, lingering in the shadows of the unknown. And so, my story ends, not with a conclusion, but with a cautionary tale. The screaming paintings, whether a curse or a legend, are a reminder of the mysteries that lie beyond the veil of the ordinary, waiting, ever patient, for the next unsuspecting soul to unveil their hidden terrors.